Hey guys, welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. Um, so in the last couple episodes, we've been working on these bearing housings. Uh, be sure to check out uh, part one and part two of this series on these guys here. Uh, in the latest one, we uh, we cut these pockets out. Uh, previous to that, we did the bores and the facing and all that. So now we're getting ready to uh, to do. Um, um, a slitting operation and then a counter boring and tapping operation to make these kind of into uh, split clamps. So uh, we're going to use a big fat slitting saw here and um, we have a kind of a, we got to start on an angled surface so that's a little bit interesting there. So uh, let's uh, pop over on the mill and uh, let's get to it. Okay so you can kind of see our problem here is we have to poke a hole through this but all we have to start on is this kind of curved surface here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a flat here so we can get started and, uh, and then come in with a drill bit. Other, if we don't uh, make a good landing spot there, it'll, um, it'll slide off of that surface and, uh, and you'll know, drill out the side of that thing <laughs> if you're lucky. So um, I got a carbide end mill in here. What we're going to do is just create a, a little flat here. Uh, and this happens to be the same size as this uh, the drill here, so it actually gives me a nice little kind of a piloting action there. So uh, I, I can plunge at this, or I can kind of come at it sideways. Ultimately, uh, it'll be counterboard here, larger. So whatever we do with this doesn't really make much difference. So um, actually, uh, this is probably a kind of a crummy angle here. Let me I'll change the camera around so you guys can see what's going on here. All right, that's better. Hopefully my uh, my big paw is not going to get in the way here. Let me get situated. Okay, so let's see. Make sure I'm on my numbers. Uh, looks good. Vice is tight. I'm all happy. The end mill is nice and stiff, so uh, it can plunge. Plunge vertically. Uh, and and not get pushed sideways too badly. So this is chattering a bit. So what we can do is we can come at it sideways too. That's more better. And all we need is, uh, we just need to include the center point. Um, but I'm going to go a little farther than that. Just because I can. Alright, that looks pretty good. So let's actually come back up. Come back to our, uh, our actual center. And then I'll just take those steps out. Okay, and if your uh, looks good there. You can see that I've ca I've captured the center. So now, what we'll do is we'll hit it with this uh, spotting drill here, and we'll get a good heavy-duty uh, starting point uh, for a drill, and then we'll uh, we'll drill those little monkeys. over to a drill. Alright, so I've moved off axis here just for a second because uh, what, what I want to do is I want to set my my drill depth. I have a center line marked on there and I just want to go a little bit past the center line. Okay, and something like that. Looks pretty good. Okay. So I get a good start into the next piece after the gap, and so I'm going to zero the quill readout, and then uh, that'll be my uh, my drill depth. So we'll move back on. 
on center here and we can start some deep drilling here. really hard to film with the camera on the uh, right hand side of the mill. It's uh, right in the way of the big old hoof uh, that needs to be over there. I like this little Noga mini cool because I can just dispense a tiny amount of coolant so I'm not uh, flooding, the flooding the universe there. Running about 600 RPM here. Half inch, 13 millimeter drill. Almost there. Okay, there we go. Okay, that's it. Alright. Cool. Alright, so uh, let's see. Counter bore. Uh, then we gotta run a tap drill through, down. And then uh, counterbore. All right, the counterbore one because uh, <laughs> it's the uh, it took the same size call. It has a half inch uh, half inch shank on the uh, on the counterbore. So okay. Now always run your counterbores really slow. That way they last a long time. So here. That pilot is the same diameter as the hole that I uh, just cut. I'm running this directly in the collet not in a chuck, just for kind of maximum rigidity. So we're almost, almost flat. Now I got the quill break on just a little bit because it's an interrupted cut and it keeps it from bouncing a little bit. And you can use that to your advantage sometimes when you got a weird, weird deal going on there. All right, so we got a full circle now. So now at this point here, I can zero my quill, read out again, and uh, and get the the correct depth at this point. So lube her up.
there to uh, have a look at it, see what it looks like. All right, let's see what it looks like. Yeah, that's pretty good. So we're gonna, you know, we're gonna chamfer the edge of that hole a little bit, uh, probably by hand. So I think I want to go just a little deeper, and uh, that way uh, it doesn't intersect. So. I think we're gonna go to uh, let's go to 520. Okay, 520 it is then. Now we're talking. So when I, you know, when I chamfer that off, it'll uh, intersect that edge nicely. So okay, all right. So uh, rinse and repeat, and then uh, we'll do some tapping. All right, power tapping action. I'm using a Jacobs chuck because it, it grabs the uh, the tap a little better. I'm getting close now. I hate to break. I'd hate to snap that off down this hole with all this work in this. <laughs> I can go back and uh, tap a little deeper by hand if I need to, so. You see with this tap here, it pushes the chips up the flutes here out of the hole instead of in front of it like a spiral point tap. So, there you can see the, the chips coming out of the, out of the flutes there. Okay. <coughs> All right. Last thing is to, uh, to put um, uh, some body clearance uh, for the fastener. So there's a straight sec, the tap section's down here. We want a little bit of clearance around the fastener body um, so that it doesn't interfere with that, uh, that hole. Just uh, opening the upper section up just a little bit. And we drilled at that size initially because, or the, ha the smaller sizes, that way it fits the pilot of the counterboard well. You don't want to, you don't want your pilot loose in the hole, if you know what I mean. You catch my drift. Yeah, pick up what I'm laying down. Alright. That's it. Okay. So, now we can, uh, oops, drop the chuck key on the floor. Move on to uh, doing our slitting operation. Okay, so uh, we're getting ready to slit these things here. And I got them Siamese up um, just so it's less, <clears throat> less work. I can make one pass through here and uh, be done. Um, so this is one of those things that uh, um, people have trouble with. So uh, uh, there's nothing to fear from slitting. Uh, you just have to... Uh, you know, do it the right way. So what we don't want to do is take this in a bunch of little passes. Uh, we take it in one whack and uh, um, we should be fine. Um, and the reason is, is the, the chips don't have anywhere to be in there. It, it cleans all the chips out each revolution. So if you <clears throat> make a pass and then you make another pass, um, there's, a, there's a space in there, then the chips can pack and then you can cause havoc. So. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to keep a brush handy. That way we can brush the chips out and, and keep it nice and wet here, um, you know, as it's going through. And, um, you know, we're going to whip, whip through there. So whip. <laughs> Whip's probably not the right word. So, <laughs> all right. It's about as slow as this machine goes here. And... Um, Well, that's pure coolant. I wonder if I want. Yeah, let's do a little little air on that. All right. So I'm 
already on center, so, uh, and I'm, uh, what I want to do is get engaged with the cut nicely. a pretty coarse tooth, coarse tooth saw and I'm right on a I'm right on a little edge right so it's that little corner is uh, is uh, can go into the gullets of the tooth so I gotta start kind of gently I would say is the right word Let's get back up in there it'll smooth out once I have a a couple of a couple of tooth flat on there. Cut a little starting groove in there just to help me uh, pass. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, back in.
so that went pretty good. Um, you know, you never you never know which way these are going to spring when uh, uh, you know when you cut through them, and uh, you know you got a 50-50 chance basically. Um, in this case, they opened up, which uh, um, was fine. But what it does is, uh, as it opens up, the cut, um, you know, the cut is still going across the same line, so you get a little bump in the cut. Not a big deal. Um, you know, it's just a, a slit to separate these two uh, so that they act as a clamp. Uh, so we'll deburr this, and then we got one more hole left to do in this, and, uh, and then some radius work, and then we're done with these guys, and they get painted. Um, red actually these are going to get painted red so uh oh and there's some slots in here i forgot about them you know what i should have done those before i did this oh well uh no biggie uh well i can still i can put the bolt in there hmm. forgot about that uh there's some guide slots in here for uh some keys i probably should have milled those before i separated these but uh oh well it doesn't really matter okay uh so let's move on to the next thing Okay, so we're um, getting ready to uh, cut this uh, slot through here. Uh, this is a guide slot here that runs along there. Okay, like that. Yep. Alrighty. Um, but when I split these pieces, when I cut this slit through here, they sprung open a little bit. So what that means is um, these two machine faces are not parallel anymore unless I adjust them with this uh, screw that I put in. So that's what we got to do first is get those little monkeys in line. I'm going to use my uh, my little Noga Indicol thing here. We'll come down and we'll just touch off there. And all right, roughly zero. Let's see what we got here. And you can. Hopefully you can see that it's moving a mile. So, uh, so let's see. That's it's got to go down. Yeah. All right. Uh, so you started on zero. Let's let's bring it back to zero or close to it. Let's see what we. Got. Okay. Uh, that's a good guess. Uh, it's roughly pivoting off of this side here. Actually, that's pretty damn good. Um, what do we got? About a half there. Okay, a little bit. You know, uh, that's close enough for me. Um, I'm looking in the camera viewfinder here, so uh, um, that's close enough. <laughs> okay, I'm calling it. Now, um, let me re. So now this is also, it's separated here too, we cut through that, so uh, I think I just want to, because I'm chicken, I just want to stabilize that a little bit uh, while we mill this so there's no vibration. So let me change the camera a little bit so you guys can see that. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to use our trusty cant twist. See Adam, we use these all the time around here. They're real convenient for little stuff like this on the mill. Down. So all I'm doing is just tying these two halves together here, or this, the both sides of the split, so that there's no there's no vibration. Now I've already picked up the center, so uh, I don't really need to do that again. So what I'll do to start with here, I need to lube that. Is come down and establish a zero with the end mill here. I'm just going to touch off here. And can you see that? Oh, yeah, not really. I'm zeroing the quill readout. Come up a little. All right. And I think it'll take about, I don't know, 60,000, something like that. That's pretty good. Let me get some, uh, some juice going here. A little handy dandy thing with Ziggy here. Need much here. Now this is a what's called a slotting, or you know, you're you're cutting a uh, a groove the width of the end mill. Now this is a 10 millimeter end mill here, 3/8 inch. 
the slot ends up 5 eighths wide. And uh, so I'm just going to take a pass right down the, right here on the, get in the center, Mr. Wizard. Take a little pass right down the center of it. You know what? Just clear out some of that material. So we're cutting on both sides, so it's important to clear the chips out of that uh, and blow them out of the way or else it recuts them. So and it's about 1400 RPM. Just a tiny wisp of coolant. You can see it building up there. I'm not, I don't have much going on there. I, I like to work, uh, you know, neat with the uh, uh, nearly neat with coolant and stuff. You don't need very much. I'm going back, I just went a little deeper that time, down the center. Uh, so I'll, I'll work the depth down and then I'll start coming off on the sides. I like to work um, center line out in these situations. So we're getting close now, and uh, I'm going to take a little measurement here, see where we're at. So to do that, I'm going to use this uh, adjustable parallel here, and I'm going to stick it in the slot, and then I'll wedge it in there nice and tight. So it's got a nice broad contact area, so it's averaging a little bit of that surface. And we'll give it a little squeeze. There, 612. Oops. Yeah, 612. Uh, we're looking for 626, so that's 16 thousandths or so to come out of there. All right, so now you know where we are. Now you got to be a little bit careful. Um, that that end mill has a tiny little corner radius, so if I jam this all the way to the bottom, I have a potential to interfere there. So I held it up. I held it up just a little bit so that. Uh, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't all the way down in the slot there, okay? Just a little point of reference. Okay, a little bit more out of there. All right, that should be it. Clean it out. Let me get a uh, measurement. Okay, about two thousandths over, that's good. And then here's my uh, my functional check here. Is this a five ace wide parallel? I want to make sure that that fits the whole the whole distance. So you know, not just one little area, but the whole distance here. So and it looks like it goes right in, no problem, and it's not loose. There's no side to side wiggle. But it goes in and, and slides slides perfectly. Okay. Anyway, that's the goal. Do a little deburring. Uh, I got one more side to do, and then uh, uh, that's it. So. Slug over there. So normally, when uh, 
the uh, use these rotor brooches. They have a spring-loaded pin when you use them in the uh, the actual magnetic drill, but uh, I don't have one of those for the uh, for the uh, mill. And there's the finish on the inside of the pocket there from the roughing end mill. <laughs> little, little plug. Okay, deburr done.